Opponent. On the strength of the Vedic text, it can be asserted that what is spoken here is the merger of the organ of speech into the mind itself. Vedanta. The answer is given by saying no, since that is not its material cause. A thing can merge into what its material cause is, as for instance an earthen plate into earth. But there is no valid proof to show that the organ of speech originates from the mind, whereas the engagement of the functions in activity or their disengagement is seen to be based on something that may not be the material cause. For instance, the activity of fire, which is of the nature of light and heat, tagus, may originate from fuel, which is by nature earth, and it may get extinguished in water. Opponent. On such an interpretation, how will the Upanishadic text, speech is withdrawn into the mind, Chandogya 686, be reconciled? Vedantan. That is why the aphorist says, and so the Upanishads say, in a figurative sense that is not antagonistic to reason. The idea implied is that the Upanishadic text fits in with this interpretation according to which the organ and its functions are understood to be the same in a figurative sense. Sutra 2 Ata eva cha sarva nyanu cha and Ataha eva for the same reason Sarvani all the functions of all the organs Anu follows that is get merged in the mind. Translation. And for the same reason, all the functions of all the organs get merged in the mind. In the text, therefore one who gets his light extinguished or heat cooled off attains rebirth together with the organs that enter into the mind. Krashna Upanishad 3.9 we hear of the entry of all the organs without exception into the mind, since even here, for the same reason as in the foregoing aphorism, that is to say, that just like the organ of speech, the organs of sight, etc., are seen to lose their functions even when the mind continues to be active, and since it is not possible that the organs as such can merge in the mind, and since the Upanishadic text also fits in thus, Therefore, the conclusion is that it is in the sense of the cessation of their functions alone that all organs get withdrawn into the mind. Although there is no exception to this withdrawal of all the organs into the mind, the separate mention of the organ of speech in the first aphorism is in accordance with its mention in Speech is withdrawn into the mind. Chandogya 686 Namaste. So, people are afraid of death. That's because they don't understand death. If we really understood what death is, we would welcome it, because it offers a means of escape from continuous incarnations in the material world, samsara. When we did the series on Kata Upanishad, death turns out to be a very noble being. In fact, he is among the chief of the demigods. He's a great devotee and, of course, infinitely wise. How is that? He gets to see the cycles of birth and death and who attains enlightenment and who doesn't. And so he knows the criteria for escaping samsara. He can teach. 
and he does teach Nachiketas. Huh? That's a, a beautiful story, which I'm not going to go into in detail. Ah, the temple bells ringing. <laughs> but what I want to talk about in this episode is that the process of death is the process of manifestation in reverse. So we also made a very detailed series on Buddha's Paticca Samuppada, or dependent arising, dependent origination, as it's sometimes called. And this describes the process of manifestation, how the being creates a mind and body and senses, and then becomes entangled in their reactions and suffers. So what we want to do is reverse that process and get out. So that means from the mind, the sense basis or the sense functions develop. Like we mentioned last time, in dreams, you have vision, hearing, and other senses, but there are no sense organs because there's no body no gross body, only a mental body, the dream body. Nevertheless, we see things, feel things, huh? we move around and we do stuff and talk to people and so on. But that is not the gross reality, that is the subtle reality. So, in the same way, these gross senses, ears, eyes, and so forth, at the time of death, the functions of these senses are withdrawn from the gross bodily organs back into the mind. See, this is pratyahara. Pratyahara is a stage in the yoga process. Yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara. But you don't go to any yoga school and learn it. They don't teach it. Huh? They don't teach the four higher stages or the three lower stages. <laughs> Only asana, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's almost useless. Yeah, it's good for health and, you know, uh, makes you look nice and all that. But without yama and niyama, rules and regulations of spiritual life. Without pranayama, you can't have pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses. And so you can't reach concentration, dharana, or meditation, dhyana. But to speak of the aim of yoga, which is samadhi. So this withdrawal of the sense functions from the sense organs is exactly the same as pratyahara in the yoga process. And how it works is that the mind actually contains all these functions of the senses as we experience in dreams. And these extended functions permeate the sense organs and give them energy and operate them. And so they appear to have consciousness, huh? but their consciousness and their activity and their energy are only reflections of the mind, the intelligence, and ultimately of Brahman. This was discussed in detail in our series on Brik Drishya Vivekaha, uh, which you all should watch. It's background material. It's necessary knowledge. Necessary, but not sufficient for realization. What is sufficient for realization is knowledge of Brahman, Brahma Vidya. But that knowledge requires the background of knowledge of the proper relationship between the mind, the senses, the body, the intelligence, and so on. And that's what we're giving here. 
the overview, uh, the top level view. So Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra is giving this overview to prepare us for death. Because, like I said, death is a door into enlightenment. And many, many people have attained enlightenment at the moment of death. Because the level of necessity of realization reaches 100% at the time of death. You realize, oh, the body is going away. The body is falling apart. The body is no longer functioning properly. And if you are sane, if you are intelligent, if your intelligence is not blocked by sinful activities, then you can observe this process happening in real time. The pratyahara that we experience during yoga practice is only a rehearsal. The pratyahara at the time of death is the real thing, and it's irreversible. Yes, I know, modern medical science can in some cases revive a person who is even in a state of clinical death. But that is highly artificial, and it's really not recommended for yogis. Yogis should accept death as a friend that opens the door to liberation. Just the way he's described in Katopanishad. And go through that door with full knowledge and full awareness that what is on the other side is the spiritual world, Brahma Loka, Shiva Loka, Shakti Loka, whatever you want to call it. The pure creation, as it's termed in Lakshmi Tantra. Well, that's another series you should see. <laughs> but besides these, the ultimate realization is to simply merge into Brahma, Nirguna Brahma. And in that case, there is no next life. There is no next body or any activities or awareness of the world or through the senses after death. Because all these things simply dissolve into Brahma. This is the highest realization. And this will come to us all. Because even after the death of the body and residence in Brahma Loka, until the end of the material universe, then at the Mahapralaya, when the universe itself is dissolved, all those beings enter back into Nirguna Brahman, where they rest in ecstasy for an indeterminable amount of time. Actually, there is no time in Brahman. Brahman is timeless and eternal. That is why all of our activities, all of our knowledge, everything that we think and do should be directed towards self-realization because this enlightenment is the end of all suffering, the beginning of eternal bliss, and the greatest self-realization. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.